In this module, we are going to look at a very attractive application of NGNs, uh, particularly with regards to the customer base. IPTV is one of the most favorite applications and the delivery of the content for IPTV requires an understanding of uh, different scenarios, particularly involving uh, once roaming is there and once it's a non-roaming scenario. Um, naturally, we'll start with non-roaming because uh, in a roaming scenario, a lot of interaction between different IMS and their components of the engine architecture are going to be involved. So IPTV unicasting is the transmission of the content from uh, one uh, content provider to one content seeker. So typically IPTV services uh, are provided to a variety of users who are coming from different NGNs. So there's a requirement that uh, some functional elements have to be identified which would be either activated or not activated depending upon where the user is located because the content can be distributed across the NGN uh, um, uh, service providers which are uh, uh, many. So in that case uh, we need to understand uh, how two scenarios are independently handled. Let's look at the uh, non-roaming scenario. Uh, it looks uh, intuitive to assume that it's going to be a simpler scenario and indeed it is because here the IPTV transport function uh, in uh, the NGN architecture it uses the uh, service control functions which come uh, uh, naturally in the NGN architecture. Uh, so all the connection establishment requests for uh, uh, um, uh, establishing connection between the client or the user and the service provider are established through signaling. Uh, this signaling is uh, based primarily on uh, SIP and then certain control functions like uh, uh, activation of the content and uh, pausing the content or uh, streaming the content are all managed by the service control function. Um, here the end user equipment functionality uh, which is implemented in the user equipment uh, interacts with the uh, network functions in the same NGN. So the requirement to look for the uh, uh, content provider is not there. So no routing or lookup takes place. It's a very local phenomenon. So correspondingly, the uh, network attachment control functions which are responsible for providing uh, connectivity of the user equipment to the NGN architecture uh, take care of the uh, initial requirements such as the uh, connectivity, the access and authorization to this particular content. Subsequently, all the uh, uh, functions like uh, uh, application provisioning, um, um, discovery of the service and the selection of the most appropriate content are done uh, locally. So the main concern here is to highlight the point that uh, since it is the same, NG same NGN, so the uh, service control function and the uh, network attachment and control functions are primarily responsible and it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, if there's a requirement for QS control because a user might be expecting certain quality of service. So in that case the same uh, admission control functions, the resource reservation functions uh, of the uh, 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 transport stratum are activated. Uh, it gets a little more complicated when uh, we talk about the uh, roaming scenario because in roaming scenario the user equipment moves from the home NGN to the uh, visited or the foreign NGN. Uh, since both of these are NGNs so there's an understanding that uh, um, the two IP multimedia systems of the uh, original home NGN and the visited NGN are going to interact with each other. Uh, the user makes an explicit request while being in the foreign NGN. Uh, so the responsibility to interact with the home NGN lies with the um, visited NGN. Um, this is best understood once we look at the complete illustration. Here we start off with the leftmost side. You can see here that we have the IPTV transport function. Uh, which are incorporated in the user equipment which make an explicit request to the 
are the access network functions in the engine architecture. So a request is made and that after granting the request, then uh, the IPTV transport functions interact with the network attachment and control function for subsequent authentication. Upon the authentication approval, then an IP address is assigned. And then formally, the uh, IMS functions are uh, invoked through the SIP processing that involves a registration of the client or user equipment IP address and credentials with the uh, user profile. So user profile looks at it as a case of uh, a prepaid customer or a postpaid customer and uh, remaining balance etc. Once everything is there then uh, it is uh, allowed to proceed. So the IMS functions then allow the IPTV transport functions to be registered as part of the allowed users. Then the ITF start the proper SIP signaling because uh, this is going to be a request in which the content is being requested from remote entity. So the SIP invite for uh, real-time streaming protocol is initiated that subsequently triggers resource reservation and uh, this resource reservation allows the required bandwidth, computing power and uh, the uh, time of service to the uh, requesting uh, ITF. Then the IMS calls the uh, application function or the content provider for the video on demand. Then acknowledgement is sent to the ITF and uh, after the request for streaming service then the initiation of content delivery is requested because first the content was requested now the content delivery is being requested subsequent approval is granted uh, after resource reservation and then an explicit request is sent to deliver the data and then data streaming takes place the video on demand basically can uh, be delivered uh, from the application function uh, right to the ITF uh, using uh, the protocol stack of uh, UDP over IP because uh, while UDP is at the transport layer, RTP is at the application layer. So uh, the data or the live or the streaming data is encapsulated from the application function server end to the ITF and hence the video is played back on the client user equipment.